Hello, how are you? My name is Louis Piluso and today I'm going to share with you five tricks I use all the time with native plugins that Pro Tools offers. And that means the ones that come included and not the ones that you have to buy separately. As producers and mixers, we often get distracted a new plugin that comes out, the flavor of the week, and sometimes we see a famous producer or mixer behind the uh, advertisement and we think that that's the tool we need to get better sounds. And we often realize that it's not quite like that because most of the albums we love weren't created with that plugin that they are trying to sell to us. So today we're going to take the vintage road of plugins and I'm going to use some of the plugins, the native plugins from Pro Tools that have existed for like 20 years or more. So anybody who has like an older version of Pro Tools can also enjoy of this tutorial and start using these tricks today. So I really hope you enjoy and share this video. Don't forget to subscribe. This is quite a new channel and I want to help as many people as possible. So let's go with the first plugin. I'm going to open on a vocal track, the equalizer from Avid that is called EQ3 7 Band. Did you know that this plugin has a secret feature that that you can't really see on the display. Well, that feature, if you press shift and control and click on any of the knobs, it allows you to solo that frequency band. So you can search with your ears for those travel frequencies and tame them and also get to learn how to use the equalizer. Let's have a little listen. Gonna break some dreams. It's gonna break some hearts It's gonna make some tears It's gonna tear down everything Cause I'm inflicted by your smile Your face, I'm addicted to relive this ritual that's out of control. So it's like really cool to solo different bands because that allows us to also learn how to equalize because we can hear without using a graph in, that most modern EQs have. And this allows us to search with our ears and get the best result. Let's move quickly to our second tip and that will be talking about sidechain. So a very practical tool for producing and mixing is sidechain used with compression or with a gate. Today I'm going to use sidechain with a compressor that is included in Pro Tools and we're going to open it on a synth track and just choose the Dyne 3. So now I have my compressor activated. So I have my sidechain input right here. So I'm going to actually root my kick bus that I created before into this input. So I'm going to choose kick sidechain, activate the sidechain, and now as we can hear, it fluctuates with the kick. So that's on, off is going straight, and now on. So that's what we call like a pumping effect. It's used a lot for electronic music and pop and other genres. But sidechain is not exclusive for those kind of genres. It's also used in other subtle ways. So the main knobs on a sidechain that you have to pay lots of attention to is the attack and the release. The attack is how long it will take for the compressor to act once it receives the kick drum in, in this case. So how fast it will duck the sound and the release is how fast it will let go of that sound once the kick stops playing. If we have like a, a fast release, we'll get that pumping sound like immediately like coming up. And it's like if we lost one of the beats. So if we listen to it on solo. It's like if we lost the first beat. So if we are working on more acoustic material or, or something more organic, we can choose for instance, a slow release that is used a lot, for instance, for vocal effects. So you can get the effect reverbs and delays to come in 
once the phrase has ended. So I'm going to show you, let's go back to our vocals. And for instance, we can hear how on the reverb, we can see how the sidechain acts. It's gonna break some dreams. Comes up. It's gonna break some hearts. It comes up. It's gonna make some tears. It's gonna tear down everything. If I turn it off. It's gonna make some tears. It's gonna tear down everything. It's working all the time and we don't really want that because it will get too muddy on the mix. So that's a really pro tip. Another tip using this is that you can actually use the knee to make it softer and you can use the ratio to make the effect more drastic or more subtle. Sidechain is used a lot, for instance, for uh, radio, TV, cinema. Whenever like the dialogue comes in, the music ducks and it comes down. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe and show your support below with a comment. So for number three, let's open one of the plugins with the most personality. I'm going to go back to my synth track. And I'm going to open the Lo-Fi plugin. I absolutely love this plugin. It's amazing. So the Lo-Fi plugin is a digital saturator. We have a, like a bit crusher that is called sample size that we can do like a bit crushing. Um, then we have the sample rate that acts like a filter, but actually eliminating digital information, which is kind of quirky. And then we have a aliasing filter that if we bring it down, it will act like a kind of resonance filter because it will add lots of like distortion at the cutoff that we choose up here. So it's very interesting to play like if it was a synth, like a cutoff and a resonance, but what it's actually doing is like digital distortion, which can make like a, a vocal become very robotic and stuff which I love. And then we have distortion, noise, and saturation. I use this plugin a lot to make sounds more percussive, have more texture, and have like that feeling like the speaker is ripped. Very nice for like electric guitars. So let's start playing with it. You can use this for a transition. So when you're like finishing the bar, you can just open this plugin, maybe on a different track, so you can uh, have a better control of the of the volume, and then go back to the original sound like this. Yeah, really cool. So we can duplicate our track, and we can have it activated on one and on the other. No, so we can put the second channel like lo-fi. There we go. Without. So for our fourth trick is something that makes us really like, that is to use stereo expansion. There are different ways to achieve this kind of expansion, which is to use a phase shifters, pitch shifters, chorusing. There's many ways to get that kind of thing, that kind of sound that sounds wider than normal. And I'm going to show you something that is really, really easy that you probably have on every single door. But what we're going to do is use this vocals that have my lead and my double. To relive this ritual. And what I want to do is to get that expensive sound that the double sound wider than normal. So I'm going to add the pitch two. And the first thing I want to do is just leave it unlinked. 
And I'm going to suggest that you do three different presets. The first one, you're going to lower the left side by minus five cents and the right side on positive five. So this is a psychoacoustic effect that you have detuned on the left and got it five cents lower and he detuned on the right and brought it up five cents. So if you have them both sounding at the same time, psychoacoustically, you'll feel like everything is balanced and in tune. And so this is a very easy trick. I'm going to suggest to save your preset, you go to preset up here and you put save settings as. I already did it and I have minus five and plus five, then minus 10 and plus 10 and the same with 20. The wider and the bigger the number gets, you'll feel it getting wider, but you also have more kind of pitch shifting effects. Um, so let's have a little listen to how it works in context. So I have both my vocals and doubles together at the same time, that that's what I want to listen to. And I'm going to turn on and turn off this plugin. I'm inflicted by your Mono. smile, your face. I'm addicted to relive this wider. Even wider now. That's out of control. So it feels like when you have it in minus 20 and plus 20, it actually feels like if you have it behind your ears. So let's go again. Minus. This is how it sounded originally. I'm inflicted by your smile, your face. I'm inflicted by your smile, your face. I minus 10. I'm inflicted by your smile, your face. I'm inflicted by your smile, your face. Of course, you have to listen to this through proper headphones or speakers, and you have to be like in the middle. Otherwise, you won't notice the difference. I recommend you use this on like secondary channels, like for instance, synthesizers, maybe some guitars, a clap for percussion, doubled vocals or background vocals. It's pretty good to use this because you can actually take advantage of your sides. And it's a very cool trick to sound wider. So now let's go with the last tip. And it's one of my favorites. And you can do this very, very easily. And this is called the reverse reverb that we have listened to it on countless albums and songs, like on snare drums, on vocals, on a whole track. It's really interesting. So it's very easy to do this. I just want to duplicate my my vocal channel, I'm going to do it on vocals right now. I'm going to take, tick off the active playlist and I'm going to just choose the first phrase and I'm going to drag it down and duplicate it using the option and click. And then I'm going to just select a section before and after, and then I can trim it towards my liking. So now I'm going to go up to the menu and into audio suite, and I'm going to choose the debug that is one of the oldest reverb plugins of Pro Tools, which has lots of cool tricks, actually, like a very underestimated good plugin. For instance, if you go to Room, you can actually take it to Infinite and it will never stop making reverbs to your sound. So that's cool to print it, sample it, do different things, but that's not for this video. Let's go to Plate. I'm going to choose a quite large decay. Yeah, around 10 seconds, 9 seconds is the same. So now let's have a little look at what happens here. We have a button that is called Reverse. So let's click on it. And now what it's done is reverse the track, added reverb, and then reversed it again. So that allows you to have the tail of the reverb at the beginning. So have let's listen to this on its own. Really cool, and together with everything. It sounds fucking expensive, doesn't it? I love it. Let's try using it on vocals, try using it on snares. Maybe a guitar solo would be really cool. Experiment and let me know what you did. The goals of this kind of videos is to motivate you to use what you already got and maybe not get so distracted with 
new plugins and, re- and new releases and focus your attention in the music. That is actually why we started producing most of us because we love me- making music. So sometimes uh, marketing can distract us from our real focus. And of course, paid plugins or newer plugins have way more features than what we just seen. It's actually quite basic and simple, but it can get you a really long way. Let me know what native plugins you use. And if you want me to show you maybe some newer plugins, let me know below. My name is Louis Peluso. I'm going to leave you here a video I made of on getting like really nice vocal sounds. And then I'm going to leave you uh, some other playlists with gear review and, and, and other cool stuff for you to carry on watching. Don't forget to subscribe. My name is Louis Peluso and thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Let me know what you thought. Bye bye.